Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today and Merry Christmas to everyone. So one of the top questions that we get asked here on the farm involving illness or sickness with sheep and goats is about bottle jaw. So today I wanted to take some time to talk to you about bottle jaw, what it is, what you can do for it, and what it means for your animals and their overall health. Stay tuned to find out more. So it's important to understand that bottle jaw isn't a disease, it's not a bacteria, it's not a virus, it is a symptom. And it is a symptom of a loss of red blood cells and proteins in the bloodstream. So for those of you that are science nerds like me, I'm going to make this very simple. So when I don't use high tech terms like osmosis and gradients and things like that, and you feel yourself getting a little upset, just, you know, have a cup of coffee and I don't know, watch a TV program, have a nap, maybe a cookie, you'll feel better. For the rest of you, we're gonna break this down in very simple terms that you can understand. We're gonna del delve, dive, dive, delve. We're gonna delve, dive, both of those, into bottle jaw, what it means, how it works, and what it means for your flock. So with that being said, first and foremost, we need to know what is bottle jaw, what does it look like? Well, bottle jaw looks like this. This is a picture of a sheep with bottle jaw, and basically it's just a fancy way of saying fluid accumulation under the jawline. In humans, we refer to this a lot of times as third spacing. And if you've ever heard someone say, well, I'm bloated, or if you've ever seen an individual that's really sick and they have swollen legs, um, that's kind of the same uh, idea. We have fluid in places where it's not normally at or where it's not normally supposed to be. So in sheep and goats, they tend to manifest this and show this in their jawline. This is not a goiter. A goiter is a term that's used for an enlargement of the thyroid gland. The thyroid wraps itself around the esophagus area. It's kind of a butterfly shaped and it kind of wraps itself around. And when animals or people experience a lack of iodine, it tends to get enlarged. There are other reasons why it gets enlarged, but we'll just say for all intents and purposes, most of the time it's due to an overall lack of iodine in the diet. That is not the same as bottle jaw. If you feel the esophagus area of your sheep or goat and it feels larger and a little bit hard, it's a very defined lump in the throat area, you are dealing with a goiter, you are not dealing with bottle jaw. If you have a bunch of fluid that's underneath the jawline, it's kind of soft and squishy and the animal is sick, you are more than likely dealing with bottle jaw. As a matter of fact, we're just gonna say that you are dealing with bottle jaw. So, very excited today. We are going to go back in the shop. Yeah, we're gonna to go to the whiteboard, which I know some of you hate. It's okay. Again, you know what to do, cooking a nap. So for the rest of us, we're gonna head into the shop. We're gonna jump in front of the whiteboard and we're gonna draw some pictures so we can understand why this fluid is going in places that it shouldn't necessarily be. So let's head into the shop. Alrighty, so what we have here is um, our way of explaining what's called osmosis to you. So this is important to understand why the fluid moves from one area to the other and how we have fluid that ends up in places that it's not supposed to be. So what we have here is two cylinders that are connected and right here, we're gonna pretend that this is a filter that only allow, allows water to travel back and forth. Now. We're going to uh, fill both of these up equally with an equal amount of water and we're gonna add to each side, we're gonna add three, we're gonna say three little units of sodium uh, of, to this water, sodium chloride to this water, we'll just say salt. Um, so we have three in each side and you can notice that the water levels are the same. Now what is interesting and what you are going to find is the water wants to maintain the same concentration on both sides. And what's very interesting is, is if I actually add an extra three 
units of sodium chloride on this side or anything. You can say calcium, you can say sodium, you can say uh, potassium, you can say proteins, you can say whatever, uh, just for the purposes of this. What you're going to notice is, is you're going to have a shift in your water level. And what you're going to notice is, is that water is going to change in order to try to even out that concentration. And so on this side, the water level is going to drop. And on this side, the water level is going to rise. So you notice we have twice as much water on this side as we do on this side. And that's because that water wants to even out the concentration. So we have twice as many units over here as we do over here. Our water raises twice as high as it does over here to try to even out the concentration. Right now, the concentration is even on each side. So this is the same reason why we have issues with animals um, and we have issues with people when our red blood cells get out of whack in the system and it looks something like this. Normally in your arteries and veins, you, so we'll pretend that this is a vein or an artery. In our veins and arteries, we have lots of red blood cells that look kind of like little donuts. And they're in here floating around. And you have all kinds of other things as well. But what that does is that kind of, that pull, that concentration helps to keep the water in our body where it needs to be. It keeps the fluid and the blood and everything where it needs to be because we have that pull to even out between the two. When you get a heavy worm load in an animal and that worm or worms starts to eat up some of these proteins, these red blood cells, what ends up happening is, is you have a higher concentration out here than you do in here and the fluid starts to shift back into this third space, into this interstitial space. And that is why we get fluid in places that we're not supposed to have. Our worms in the body, in the host of the sheep or the goat, are drinking all the blood. The red blood cells are getting depleted. You no longer have that pull from those red blood cells and fluid starts to leak into other parts of the body. And in sheep and goats, we notice that in the jawline. And that's what actually causes bottle jaw. So bottle jaw is an imbalance of proteins and blood cells in the bloodstream, and it allows fluid to go where it's not supposed to be. So when you see bottle jaw in an animal, what that tells you is, is they have a severe lack of red blood cells. Now, there are other instances and other disease processes that can cause bottle jaw other than a worm load. However, 95% uh, of the time it's going to be a worm load. So if you notice that you have bottle jaw, you check the eyelids, and you see that the animal um, is very, very pale, chances are you're dealing with an extreme parasite load. Bottle jaw is one of the last symptoms of a parasite infestation that we see before that animal uh, dies. Chances are if you see bottle jaw, survival rate is starting to drop. So what I want you to concentrate on is when you see bottle jaw, know that things are not doing good um, and you need to start doing your worming protocol as soon as possible. It is going to take time for that to resolve itself. It's going to take a lot of time for that to resolve itself because until we can build up these proteins, build up the red blood cells in the bloodstream again, that fluid is not going to want to go back where it's supposed to go. You can't give whole blood, well you can, you could give a whole blood transfusion uh, to a sheep or a goat, but for those of us that have hobby farms, you can't do that. So what you're gonna need to do, uh, you can consider giving them iron, you can consider giving them lots of fluid, lots of good nutrition, and it's going to help them replenish um, that, uh, that red blood cell supply in their uh, bloodstream, um, and hopefully the issues will resolve. But, 
Um, overall, that's what you're looking at. Hopefully that clears up bottle jaw for you in a nutshell. If you have any other questions or concerns, make sure to let us know. I'm Tim from Lanessa Farms, specialty in heirloom livestock. Thanks for joining us again today, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.